It's that time of the year again. It is All-Star Weekend. Let's preview the All-Star Race and the All-Star Open. Hello, everyone. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news, and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What do you think of the All-Star Race at Wilkesboro? Who is your pick to win the North Wilkesboro All-Star Race? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. So this is going to be a very interesting weekend. I actually have a couple more things to go over more than usual when it comes to the All-Star Weekend. First of all, let's talk about the track. Since the last time we're at North Wilkesboro Speedway, it had a repave and this track is smooth. I was hearing reports during testing that they were going two seconds quicker than the laps they were doing last year. But it sure is fast. <laughs> so that's quite interesting. A completely different surface compared to last season. I heard it is a little bit bumpy, but the surface is smooth. There's little humps, I would say. More like humps, little humps in the track. But this is a short track, and we do have the short track package, so we'll have to see how that goes. Which leads me into the next point, which is tires. Let's talk these all-star tires and the different compounds we'll have. There's three tire compounds that are being brought to the track this weekend for the Cup Series, with at least two of them getting use. The one that might potentially not get used is the wet weather tire, as NASCAR has been bringing this wet weather tire to the road courses and short tracks. And then the other two tire styles that we will be getting will be the Prime and the Option tire. The Prime tire will have the yellow lettering on the side of the wheel. It'll be very similar to what tires we've already had throughout the year. A little bit of a harder tire. But then we'll have the brand new, newly developed Option tire, which will have the red writing on the tire wall. This option tire being made out of a softer rubber compound, very similar to the wet weather tire. I really like that they're doing this with the all-star race. They're testing out new things with the tires. They've heard the talk about the tires, especially after Bristol. I think that woke a lot of people up that the tires could be possibly the big fix to our short track problem. Each race team will have five sets of prime tires and four sets of of the option tires for the whole weekend. For the preliminary events, this includes practice, qualifying, and the open. If you have to participate, you'll have three sets of the prime tires and two sets of the option tire, which will leave two sets each for the main event. One of the rules that was put into place that you cannot mismatch these tires. You can't have your left sides be option tires and your right sides be the prime tires and vice versa. That is not allowed for the all-star race or any of the preliminary events. For both the open qualifying and the main event all-star race qualifying, you will have to do qualifying on the prime tires. And then the final thing when it comes to these tires that the all-star race and the all-star open, you will have to start the race on the option tires. So you have to start the race on the softer tires. And for each of the events, this includes the qualifying races, the open, and the all-star race. You'll have to make a four-tire pit stop at the midway point. Now I'm going to put a couple of lists on your screen. On the left side, I will have all the drivers that are locked in to the Cup Series all-star race. This is 17 drivers already locked into the race. They've either won the all-star race before, they're either a Cup champion, or they've won a race in the last two years. Then on the right side, I will have all our participants in the All-Star Open. And the way the All-Star Open is working this year, as it's worked for most years, the top two drivers from the Open transfer into the main event, creating a 19-car field until you get that 20th car, which will be a fan vote. All the action for the All-Star Race will actually be starting later tonight as we do have practice. We have open practice and we have the Pit Crew Challenge. I always love the pit crew challenge. It used to always be my favorite thing. I remember with the Charlotte Motor Speedway, they used to do it at like the Bobcats Arena, now the Hornets. That was really cool. They did that for a number of years and they've kind of brought it back with the all-star race, which I think is a great move and it will determine the starting lineups for the open and for the Saturday heats for the main event. 
Let's talk about the Saturday heats real quick. There will be two heats, 60 laps each. The 17 drivers that are already eligible for the main event will be split into two groups, 60 laps each, with Heat 1 deciding the inside lane and Heat 2 deciding the outside lane. Where you finish will pick your row in line. And then we have the All-Star Open. Like I mentioned, the top two finishers will advance from the All-Star Open into the All-Star Race. It is a 100-lap event for the Open. Once again, there will be a pit stop at the midway point of this event, as there will be for the two heat races. Before I start talking about some of the favorites I think we'll have, let's go over the All-Star Race format. I already mentioned what they'll have to do with the tires. They'll have to start the race on the option tire. There will also be a pit stop at the midway point of this event where they'll have to make a four tire pit stop. And that will be at lap 100 as this will be a 200 lap event for the all-star race at North Wilkesboro Speedway. 20 drivers competing for $1 million and they will have two sets of tires each, two sets of primes and two sets of option tires. I like that for the all-star race, they've mainly kept it pretty simple. Of course, they've added in the tire compounds being a little bit different. But other than that, I think it's a fairly simple event, especially compared to the races we've gotten in the past. We've had some crazy all-star race formats in the past. And I think the simpler, the better for this event. Just go out there and race for $1 million. Let's go over some of the favorites that I think we'll have at North Wilkesboro for the all-star open. We have some good drivers that are in the open, especially some very talented short track racers. Look no further than Stuart Haas Racing. I think all four of those drivers are very talented race car drivers, especially on the short tracks, especially if we're talking about Josh Berry and Ryan Priest. I consider both of them to be extremely talented short track racers, and they both could very well go out there and win the All-Star Open and lock themselves a spot into the main event. Then there is a couple of Toyota drivers I would keep a very close eye on because I think any three of them could win the race, and that is Bubba Wallace, Ty Gibbs, and Eric Jones. I wouldn't even count John Hunter Nemechek out. Let's just put four in there to be safe. And then let's include Carson Hosevar as well. Hosevar has done very well this season. This is a new track for everybody at this point. They have ran at Wilkesboro last season, but that was a completely different track surface. This is a whole new racetrack in my opinion. Let's see, but who is my pick to win the race and who's my pick to finish second? I think it's really hard to pick anybody but Ty Gibbs. I think Ty Gibbs is going to win this race. He's been very close to winning a race this season. He almost won at Darlington last week. He was very sneaky behind that big battle and got second. And this is going to be a very bland top two. It's a very expected top two. Second place, I'm going to have Bubba Wallace. Boring. Bubba Wallace has been fairly inconsistent, to say the least, this season. He's had some good runs, and he's also had some really bad runs this season. But I see the Toyotas as the strongest manufacturer at the moment, and Bubba Wallace is a high-quality short track racer. I can definitely see him getting to victory lane or finishing second at the All-Star Open. And let's make a fan vote prediction, too. I think it's going to be really close between Corey LaJoy and his teammate, Carson Hosevar. Ultimately, I think... Bubba Wallace would win the fan vote, but since I think he's going to finish second, he would no longer be eligible for the fan vote because he's already in the race, so it would go to the next person. And I think that next person is actually going to be Carson Hosevar. I think with all the online campaigns he's been doing, and overall, he's just a very popular driver and a very popular person in the sport. Personally, my pick would be Justin Haley. I think he's done a lot, and Justin Haley is awesome, but a lot of people aren't huge fans of him, not necessarily because they don't like him as a person but he hasn't really stood out when it comes to his racing on the track. Yeah, I saw the top five, and Haley was not in the top five. I was very surprised about that. Carson Hosevar and Corey LaJoy, though, were. I'm pretty sure Corey LaJoy got the fan vote last year. If he didn't get it last year, he got it the year before. Corey LaJoy has been voted into the all-star race before. He is a very popular driver, but I have noticed over the last couple of months There is a couple of fans who are beginning to dislike him. I I love Corey LaJoy. I don't see what the problem is. The f*** is their problem, man? Some people have been really disliking LaJoy over the last year, and that could be the difference maker between him making the all-star race to the fan vote and his teammate, Carson Hosevar, making it instead. All right, after all of that, this is going to be a, this is probably going to be my longest preview video, by the way. After all of that, we're going to get to the all-star race and who I think could win the all-star race. 
I think the first person I have to mention is last year's winner who won it in dominating fashion. That's Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson's already started off May so incredibly. Yeah, I expect Kyle Larson to be really strong with this being a brand new surface and essentially a new racetrack. I would actually keep an eye out for Joey Logano. I would consider Joey Logano's performance this season to be awful. I wouldn't put that 100% on him because Ford have been struggling for the most part. They did win last week, but Penske were struggling still last week. But it seems like almost every time we go to a new racetrack, Joey Logano is either a threat for the win or he wins the race. I would definitely keep my eye on Denny Hamlin and Christopher Bell as well. I can see either one of these two drivers getting the win. Hamlin's been extremely strong all year. This type of track kind of fits his MO as well especially when it comes to the tire saving. Throwing the option tire in there and the tire saving, I think that even helps Denny Hamlin's potential performance even more. Christopher Bell has had a really tough season, and he's looking to turn it around. And I would see this track as a potential strong track for him. He tends to be really strong at the flatter sort of racetracks. And not by any means is Wilkesboro flat, but it is a short track, and I can see him doing pretty well and competing for the victory in the number 20 car on Sunday. And I think my underdog pick for the all-star race would have to be Ty Gibbs. It would not be the first time that a driver from the open went on to win the all-star race. And like I mentioned, he's been really close to winning before. He's been so close to winning a couple races just this season. I think it would be somewhat fitting for him to win his first race at the All-Star Race. But my primary pick, the driver who I do think is going to win the race, and I think this is a low-hanging fruit, I don't think I've picked him yet this season in my previews, which is silly of me. I haven't done a preview for every race this season, though I've been doing it for the last maybe seven or eight weeks. But I'm going to have to pick the low-hanging fruit. I'm going to have to pick Young Money. Kyle Larson, who's having a great month of May, and I hope he continues to have it. Kyle Larson is just such a talented race car driver. I can see him easily picking up this track surface and the tires very quickly. And he has to be pretty confident right now with the way he's racing in NASCAR. He's over there practicing at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Indianapolis 500. He's doing so well in his dirt stuff, even though he flipped a couple of days ago. That was gnarly. I'm just a big fan of everything he's doing right now, and I think he has to be racing with a lot of confidence. I think that would also be a huge story if he won the race. He has Kevin Harvick practicing and qualifying the car for him, and then he comes in and just wins the race, comes straight from Indianapolis and just wins the race. I think that would be really crazy and very typical of Kyle Larson to do. Do you know how easy this is for me? Do you have any idea how easy this is? This is a joke but let me know your thoughts what do you think of the all-star format who's your pick to win the all-star race and the all-star open let me know in the comments but i hope everybody enjoys north wilkesboro speedway i'm very interested to see how this track surface races but either way i think we'll have a great event on sunday and it will be entertaining even if the racing doesn't seem to be the best but that'll do it for me thanks for watching my name is kyle aka racing boy short saying peace